Okay, this is my comment for this story. My question is, who then will be charged, if not the police, for this obvious and clear case of abuse by armed force, abuse of the institution, abuse against our citizens? Who will be charged? Who is to blame? Who is guilty? Is anybody going to take accountability for what happened to this man? Or, or, is, or is being an institution, a government institution, somehow wholly ex exempt from any wrongdoing just because it happens to be a government institution? Is it because nobody has any power to overcome it, to overrun it, to fight against it? Is that the only reason why an institution is not accountable? Or is it because it is somehow um, deemed that they can't be wrong for a reason that is mysteriously unknown. You know, I don't understand, I don't care rather, um, besides the fact that um, people may have faith or may not have faith or what your religious belief is, I don't want to get too metaphysical or out there or anything, but there's one thing that is really coming across loudly and clearly. Each one of these cases that have been happening, chill innocent people, the child that... Our, our cases in America, if you look at the most outstanding ones over these last few years, it really does seem that like they're engineered, designed to make a point about how we're going about our legal systems in administrating these ways of civilization. In this case, what we have is a man that was defending his home. He was defending his home thanks to what? Thanks to the Second Amendment, correct? Advocates and defenders of the Second Amendment. Perhaps now it will dawn on you what the problem actually is. The problem is the weapon. The problem always has been the weapon, the arms the war, the instruments for killing each other, the instruments and the machinery designed to kill another human being have always been the problem. Now, I'm not sure what the Second Amendment is based on that doesn't seem to be more based about, not what is normally said, but or typically said, but about some kind of um, primitive, ancient right to wield uh, a sword or a javelin always by your side to kill that malamute or to, uh, to shoot down the, the saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> because it seems that we are unable to reason the impact of the weapon upon society. We automatically assume that we were born with the necessity to have a knife stuck to our hip according to the staunch obsessive adherent that this amendment evokes in its supporters it is obvious that the problem is the gun itself and other cultures in europe are demonstrated have long ago understood this by, for example, starting on things, because society is not getting all that better, incarcerating people massively is not making us, regardless of what people say, that we're going to make an example, and we're giving him 200 years instead of 10, 20 would scare the daylights out of anybody from conspiring to kill somebody. Instead, they give him 90 years to make an example. All of this is not making humanity any better but still our judicial system the intelligence in our institutional systems don't seem to think through hu the intelligence of human sciences they still want to punish they still want to grab the individual by the throat and hold him up like a chicken in front of the whole world because somehow we believe that everything can be solved through making an example of the individual instead of first taking care of and attending the health of society. 
looking at it sociologically, socially, what is causing, what is seeding, what is growing, what is cultivating the problems in these individuals through our society. We don't seem to realize that we're all born in the same great incubator that produces the individuals it does, and we don't take care of that incubator, we don't care to actually solve the problems with the incubator, the society that is, we want to make an example of individuals as if we're going to scare straight the rest of the population and it's not happening. It hasn't happened in hundreds, thousands of years. And for some reason, people in power can't seem to get that through their heads. It doesn't seep through. They don't realize that choking to death an individual in front of the whole group of, uh, of people, you know, uh, of a society will not make that group of people become different. They need to heal. They need to understand what they're doing. They need to understand what made them become that way growing up. To have even hope of something that is real, which is natural healing, natural redemption, natural self-recognition, always through the, the shoring and the connectivity to society to, that makes people heal. We're obsessed with the individual, we're, uh, we are obsessively expectant under, of the individual, and we're excessively uh, punishing of the individual, when all that makes us is what society has made us. So we should be obsessed with society, not with the individual, so that individuals are raised healthy. But this case clearly shows clearly shows the problem with the Second Amendment. We have both cases. We have the case of the individual right to defend their family. Now, it's pretty obvious that for the first time we have our first case in America that clearly makes an example of what the specific problem is with the Second Amendment. That it just endows anybody to have the instrument to kill another person. In this case, the anybody that we would normally blame was a father defending his family, defending his child from getting murdered, from getting murdered, and he's the one that gets killed by the police. The ones that we normally say should, if anybody has the right to bear arms, it would be the police. Well, it turns out that they were the faulted ones. This case makes a perfect example why the Second Amendment fails before humanity, before human nature, before what we're incapable of handling. We're incapable of handling an instrument that can kill another, obviously. And why did the police kill this man? I didn't, I didn't look at the story yet, but for what I I saw the, uh, rapidly two videos, and I just got fired up, and I decided to make this comment. But I heard one of the police said, it's the man in the blue robe holding the gun. Now, forgive me if I'm mistaken. I think I'm not too off if I'm actually mistaken on the precise detail. But if the police sees a man in a bathrobe, in a bathrobe, holding a gun, would it not stand to reason, unless, of course, we have become a society of automaths that no longer have family and have no idea what happens raising a child and having a family, you know, because we have become completely inhumanized and we can't think, not even intuitively, just calmly and sensitively, that that is probably not the man if he's wearing a bathrobe. Now, why did the police officer not be able to make, was not able to make this simple assessment? Because we have become a society that no longer thinks in terms of what is a normal family, what a more normal family might be living like at home, who the father might be, who the mother might be. He sees a man in a bathrobe. Now, I, I would be very, I am going to be very embarrassed if I see that it wasn't exactly a bathrobe. But you know what? Let's pretend that I'm not wrong, that it was a bathrobe. 
it was something else, a robe, <laughs> a regular robe. Am I really that off? How can a police officer from outside the house not suspect that it could have been somebody defending his family, being that we have the Second Amendment, making everybody fight for having a weapon at home? Is it more than likely half the, I don't know how many households, two-thirds of the American households or half of the American households have a gun-wielding uh, resident in the house? Would he not put together, let me make sure that since we're in America, it's not one of the house uh, people that live in the house who's got the gun to defend himself about this. They knew there was a robber. They called for a robber. I mean, this case is beautiful in, its, in all its tragedy. It's beautiful in that it, if you've got to really be insistent and stubborn and wanting to not look at what is really going on in the face because this case is showing it to you plainly what the problem is. And whoever sees this has to say, stop. We have to really look at our system, look at where our society, what is starting to happen to our society. Why can't, does anybody not have the authority anywhere to, to express a care for what this situation, this condition, this, this structure, this mechanism is doing to our society and is harming? Why is anybody not saying, we have too many innocent people in jail, stop, something is not working. We can't be having American citizens who are innocent, wrongly charged, wrongly accused, forgotten about in jail. That cannot be happening. Why are all our leaders in government afraid of bringing it up, of making it an issue? It's unbelievable.